this is a DSMC2 type red camera. The exposed pins on the top are for connecting a red touch screen. There are two rows of 13 pins each, which adds up to 26 contacts. A tech guy might think which display port has 26 contacts. Considering red hides in consoles, the true nature of their products behind unusual connectors and unnecessary number of pins, the closest that comes into mind is DVI. DVI has 24 plus 4 contacts for communicating images and transferring both digital and analog information. And this is a red touch 4.7 inch LCD. 4.7 is the smallest and cheapest monitor that RED sells for their cameras. It's on sale for $1,450 plus shipping and tax. That's the price of a 3 or 4 50 inches 4K smart TV, such as LG or Samsung. But that shouldn't be a concern when the product is. When we're buying the best of the best. RED calls this DSMC2 RED Touch 4.7 LCD. But if for one second I just covered the brand red, this product is a Touch 4.7 inch LCD that is labeled and sold as made in USA. Considering the price and professionalism of the user group, this should be an outstanding professional monitor. Let's take a look. To take a closer look, and thanks to the inventor of a screwdriver, I need to undo a couple of screws. By the way, what will you do with millions of dollars? I know the first thing I do is taking a good look. That's it, we are in. Inside the housing, there is a controller board and the LCD. We will see Red Touch 4.7 inch LCD that is marked and sold as made in USA is in fact AUO 4.7 inch LCD with its part number printed on the body. But what is AUO? AUO is a Taiwanese electronics and a screen manufacturer. And this is their website that initially comes up in Chinese language. This model H466TAN is one of the cheap products AUO manufactures and sells with eBay retail price of under $30 with free international shipping from China. Like this one, the exact same screen, brand new for $27 shipped. But if you're buying in bulk, you will get about less than half that price. With only a couple of dollars more, RED could have gotten this 1080 Full HD OLED screen with touch capabilities, more brightness, and better color rendition. But hey, RED wanted the cheapest option they could get away with. Who cares, right? Looking at the controller board, don't let the red colored sold mask confuse you. This chip is the heart of the controller board. As a Texas Instruments chip of TFP401 series. What is that? According to Texas Instruments website, it's a DVI receiver IC for flat panels. Texas Instruments is not stupid, they want to sell as many as they can, so they publish the diagram on how to develop the driver board based on their product, so everyone can do that. Like any of these controller boards on eBay, with their average price of about $20 or less, I'm taking a look at this one. This HDMI DVI controller board renders more than HD. And guess what? It's Texas Instruments based. And also gives you five controller keys. I happen to have one of these 4.7 inches iPhone screen replacements handy, which I got from Amazon Prime for 16 pounds. It comes with some extra tools and bits and bobs, and it makes a nice upgrade to the existing LCD with much better visibility and touch responsiveness. So the next time you've seen one of these screen protectors for $80, you would know that with this money, you can buy three upgraded screens for your touch screen. Guys, wake up. Everyone is doing this to you. So now we can confirm this simply is a DVI display interface. Only Red changed the shape of the connector and shuffled a few wires around to force the camera users to buy their cheap LCD for a hefty price tag. In one of these videos, I'll show you how to make your own screen for RED camera using almost any compatible touchscreen panel. So there you have it again. About $50 worth of tech in a box is sold for $1,450.
this is where with a few bucks more, even the same manufacturer has way better screens for sale. But Red chose one of the cheapest possible options for you. The only reason this is possible is that Red claims this is made in USA, because if the marking was truthful, it would have been more difficult to convince people to pay this much for a Chinese or Taiwanese product. There you have it again, deceptive made in USA claims. From the Red Minimac videos, we remember that the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, is in charge for made in USA claims. And FTC has crystal clear regulations on made in USA claim. According to FTC, for a product to be called made in USA, the product must be all, or virtually all, made in the USA. It's not down to any manufacturer to decide if they like to claim their country of origin to be the USA. FTC says, this means a manufacturer or a marketer needs competent and reliable evidence to back up the claim that its product is all or virtually all made in the US, which Red clearly doesn't have. So Red's made in USA and claims of origin are intentionally deceptive. A bit further down, FTC says, for a product to claim assembled in USA, the product's last significant transformation should have occurred in the US. While transforming a UO 4.7 inch touchscreen LCD into red 4.7 inch touchscreen LCD is not significant in my book. And concealing it in a box is a clear example of a screwdriver operation. Based on the United States rule, these products of red does not even qualify for assembled in USA claim, let alone made in USA. But red is so accustomed to lying to and deceiving the customers, they cannot help themselves even after the facts are known. For example, in this article of Cinema 5D, What's Inside the Red Minimac, Red CEO Jared Land stated, Mr. Royce then announced the release of his Genimac device in July 2017. This is an obvious lie. It was 2016. Unfortunately, Red and Mr. Land developed a little bit of skill in changing the dates of events to work in their favor. Further about Made in USA claim, Mr. Land stated, This does not mean or require that every component have been physically made in the USA. I've shown you the regulation. This is another lie. Sadly, Mr. Jared Land lies and makes confusions on the spot. For instance, he says, you will see that even in his video, my video, he takes generic media and plugs it into a red Minimac adapter. Half a second later, he says, so in the end, what we have said is true. Red does not use generic media. We do not use non-branded, lower quality media. Hang on a second. One sentence before that, you called the M500 series that I used in my video a generic media that I plugged into Red Minimac. How come the same M500 series is suddenly non-generic when Red uses it? The M500 I used in my video is either generic or not generic. If it is generic in sentence one, it is still is generic in the next sentence, bruv. Mr. Lan continues, which adapter tells the camera that the SSD is a Red Minimac? We now know this is a lie. Even now he carries on lying about the simple posture adapter. Which as you guys can see is just a simple pin to pin connection adapter. It's uh, there's no logic built into it whatsoever. How many lies do you need to hear from one person to start seriously questioning his credibility and intentions? Mr. Lance says, Red does have a pattern that covers the encoding and decoding of Red code to this media. So it's out of the media. But it seems Red loves their pattern. So let's take a closer look at it. Like United States have FTC. Similarly, the United States government has an authority for patent and trademark called the United States Patent and Trademark Office or USPTO for short. USPTO performs and enforces the patent laws in the United States. The United States patent law says a person shall be entitled to a patent unless the invention was patented or described in a printed publication in this or a foreign country or in public use or on sale in this country more than one year prior to the date of the application for patent in the United States. This is also commonly known as 12-month bar on patenting. 
Recently, and after America Invents Act came into practice, the law has slightly changed to make it even more strict. The amended law says the same thing slightly differently. A person shall be entitled to a patent unless the claimed invention was patented, described in a printed publication, or in public use, on sale, or otherwise available to the public before the effective filing date of the claimed invention. An exception is a disclosure made one year or less before the effective filing date of the claimed invention shall not be prior art to the claimed invention. That's again, same 12 month grace period. Therefore, after one year, the right to a patent is lost. But because red patents occurred before the recent changes, we go to even more relaxed pre-American Invent Act. This is the original red patent. The patent filed on 11th of April 2008, but the patent relies upon the two priority filing, provisional application 196, filed on April 11th, 2007, and provisional application number 406, filed on December 28th, 2007. Because red filing in 2008 relies upon these two priority filing, these two should be valid to make the non-provisional filing based upon these two valid. As you can see, the patent has 12 claims. Let's take a look at them. I'm sorry, but to do this properly, I have to read through a lot of crap. The language use is not that easy. This seemingly is the Red's method of writing technical stuff, probably to make them look more important than what they are. But I'll try to do it as quick as possible, so please bear with me. I guess the outcome of this will amaze you. Also, I highlight and color code the keywords and core claims for our easier reference in the rest of the video. What is claimed is 1. A video camera comprising a portable housing, a lens assembly supported by the housing and configured to focus light, a light sensitive device sensor configured to convert the focus light into raw image data with a resolution of at least 2K at a frame rate of at least about 23 frames per second, a memory device and an image processing system configured to compress and store in the memory device the raw image data at a compression ratio of at least 6 to 1 and remain substantial potentially visually lossless and at the rate of at least about 23 frames per second. 2. A video camera according to claim 1 wherein the light sensitive device includes a first group of sensor cells configured to detect a first color, a second group of sensor cells configured to detect a second color, and a third group of sensor cells configured to detect a third color. The third group of sensor cells comprising twice as many sensor cells as the second group of the sensor cells. For those who know, this is a very painful way to say Bayer pattern. You got the name everyone use. Use it. Unfortunately, I noticed Brett normally uses this kind of pretentious language probably to confuse the examiner and to make things look more important than what they are. Claims 3, 4, and 5. A video camera, according to claim 1, wherein the memory device is disposed within the housing, is supported on the outside of the housing, is connected to the housing with a flexible cable. So basically a camera storage, either internal or external, via a flexible cable. Number six, seven, and eight. We are coming to the red code. A method of recording a motion video with a camera. The method comprising guiding light onto a light sensitive device of a camera, converting the light received by the light sensitive device into raw digital image data, having a horizontal resolution of at least 2K at a rate of at least greater than 23 frames per second, compressing the raw digital image data into compressed digital image data such that their data remains substantially visually lossless upon decompression, and recording the compressed digital image data at a rate of at least 23 frames per second onto a storage device of the camera. 7. The method, according to claim 6, where the step of compressing the raw digital image data comprise compressing the raw digital image data to an effective compression ratio of at least 6 to 1. 8. The method, according to claim 6, where the step of compressing the raw digital image data comprise compressing the raw digital image data with an effective compression ratio of at least 12 to 1. These numbers are critically important, as you will see. 9 and 10. The method, according to claim 6, wherein the step of recording comprises storing the compressed digital image data, and wherein the step of recording comprises recording of compressed digital image data at a rate of at least 23 frames per second onto a storage device. Believe it or not, two patent claims to say the camera records, obviously. 11. A video camera comprising a lens assembly supported by the housing and configured to focus light, 
a light sensitive device configured to convert the focus light into a signal of raw digital image data representing the focus light and having a resolution of at least 2K, a memory device and means for compressing and recording the raw image data in a memory device at a frame rate of at least about 23 frames per second, such that the image data remaining substantially visually lossless upon the compression. 12. A portable housing having at least one handle configured to allow a user to manipulate orientation with respect to at least one degree of movement of the housing during a video recording operation of the camera. A lens assembly comprising at least one lens supported by the housing and configured to focus light on a plane disposed inside the housing. A light sensitive device configured to convert the focus light into raw image data with a horizontal resolution of at least 2K and at frame rate of at least 23 frames per second, a memory device configured to store video image data, an image processing system configured to compress and store in the memory device, the raw image data at compression ratio of at least 6 to 1 and remain substantially visually lossless and at a rate of at least about 23 frames per second. So there you have it. A simplified color-coded red patent. The rest of the patent is only mathematics and formulas on how the compression is taking place. We shall discuss that later. Now, on a red user thread, read a look back in a response to a red user asking if it was to have a happy birthday party, what date would mark that event? And here is Mr. Jim Janner responding to that question. Mr. Jair says, the first red specs day was December 13th, 2005, and he carries on, so red officially committed to building a camera in December of 2005. Interestingly, only four days after the first specs day, on 17th of December 2005, Mr. Jared Land posts a lot of technical features on DVXUs. He says, red's website, www.red.com, 4K, 4520, by 2450 Mysterium CMOS sensor, true super 35 mm size, 60 progressive frame rate at full resolution, various output, row or red card, various frame rate, 24, 30, 60 and variable, various bandwidth, 100, 80, 60, 50, 25, 90 megabit per second, various recording destinations, such as external drives and red flash arrays, Interesting to come up with all those details in such a short matter of time, especially with the exact number of pixels and exact dimensions of the sensor without having any sensor design, as Mr. Gerard claimed. Back to Mr. Jim Gerard, he carries on. A few months later, then December 2005, we exhibited at NAB 2006 with mock-ups and took $1,000 deposits thinking we could deliver by the end of the year. A bit further down, Mr. James Gerard says, Frederick told me about Ted, and the three of us spent the better part of a year investigating what it would take to do the project I had envisioned. All seemed lost until we found the Mysterium sensor. When we found the technology, I pulled the trigger. We had a large group of people come to Oakley for a roundtable meeting at the end of 2005. At NAB 2006, we showed up with a shiny prototype designed by myself and Matt plus a few others. Around this time, Jared showed up and Grant was there by the grace of Frederick. And he carries on, I did the original color science. Mercifully, Grant took over from there. It means even at this point, the original color science, maybe not in its final form, but it was done and existed because Mr. Jenner did the original color science before NAB 2006. Saturday to Thursday, April 22nd to April 27th of 2006, Las Vegas, USA. Red reported that they had hundreds of sales of Red 1, and they even won an award. As you can see, Red 1 camera bodies are in display. 
This is the closing of Red Bull NAB 2006. Sold out. By April 2006, hundreds of red cameras sold. This is Mr. Ted Shuloitz. He was the first Red.com president. This is a video of Mr. Shuloitz. In early 2006, demonstrating red camera in action was slightly before NAB 2006. What you're looking at here, what you're looking at here is uh, camera development in action. What's in here is a little bit of secret sauce. We're on our pathway to our Super 35 millimeter 4K sensor. This is the first test shoot of many. And in typical uh, Oakley style, we're doing it at the drag race. As Mr. Schloit says, this is red camera in action, early 2006. For those who may argue that this part of the computer on the car, let's take a closer look at the part. This is a car battery, and this is a power inverter. This is a normal PC monitor. Keyboard and mouse, or probably on the other side, was a black mouse only. And this is an ordinary PC. As early as the first month of 2006, Red Camera was sufficiently reduced to practice and was out in use. So, if that was the case, why Mr. Shalowitz needed to take a cart and a computer with him? To recreate the environment, I stitch a couple of frames together. This is a car battery clamp, like this. This will be connected to the positive pole of the car battery to get the power into the inverter, something like this. The inverter then feeds the monitor and the PC. As you can see, the negative line is already connected. At the rear of the PC, we can see the VGA connector and mouse and keyboard wires connected. And that green bit is a USB to PS2 adapter. But the reason that computer was needed is this, a serial port, a COM port. As you can see, this is lying there waiting to be connected to the camera. That camera in the wooden box has no buttons, but it needed to be controlled, like to press record and stuff. For those who know, a red camera can be controlled via a serial port like the serial cable connected to the camera in this picture. If you look at the camera picture carefully, apart from the power inlet, you can clearly notice the serial port at its rear, like in this picture. Or here. Mr. Ted Schloitz needed the computer only to enable him to control the camera, to push the buttons, and not for recording on the computer. And that PC, obviously, was not a super duper computer. Going back to Ted's picture at NAB again, next to the sold out sign, you will see another note. See you at IBC 2006. Friday to Tuesday, September 8 to September 12, 2006. Amsterdam, Holland. Oh, sorry, that's a private individual. Netherlands. And this is Red's then president, Mr. Schloitz. And these are Red 1 prototypes. Now, let's take a look at this AWN news coverage of the IBC 2006 events. You'll notice there are a few interesting bits as well, like Quantel's Pablo HD nonlinear color correction system that was running on 2K and 4K on Pablo system. 
or film light that was introduced base light 8 that was running 4k and implementing a new cinema 4k they were demoing a 12-bit color grading system with the use of a sony 4k digital cinema projector or even this yo-yo product that was using pci express that was allowing a resolution up to 4k this indicates that the environment in the computer industry was not too unfamiliar with 4k resolution and some decent computers were capable of dealing with 4k resolution and here is the section that covers Red's presence. It reads, the screening theater also attracted attendees curious to see the Red Digital Camera Company's first public showing of images recorded with its developing 12 megapixel Mysterium chip. Red's Ted Schloitz reported that the images in the demo had a pixel array of 4520 by 2540 across the Bayer pattern. The company has started taking $1,000 camera reservations and has reported hundreds of orders. And this is the inside of IBC screening theater. It says, Dread Team preps for projecting glorious 4K footage in the theater, IBC Amsterdam 2006. Here is a picture of the screening theater by Mr. Graham Natris. He says, we showed red footage for the first time in 2006. Mr. Graham Natras is the second named inventor on the Reds patent. The first name is Mr. James Jannert. Mr. James H. Jannert is the owner of Red.com Inc., now LLC, and is a named inventor on Red.com patents. Encyclopedia.com suggests that Mr. Jannert is a fan of creating and retaining monopolies, but no academic qualifications. On April 20th, 2006, just a few days before NAB 2006, Studio Daily publishes DP Steve Gibby's interview with Mr. James Jannert. This is important because it describes what was sold at NAB 2006. Remind you, this is only four months after the initial specs day and before Mr. Graham joining date. Coincidentally, the information we get is very similar to those we got only four days after the initial specs day with no sensor design available, as per Mr. Jim Jannar's claim. The same information that appears in the patent application over one and a half year later. In order to visualize how much information Mr. Jim Jannar disclosed in this interview, I'll bring in our color-coded patent claims. In this interview, Mr. Janner says, the sensor permits us to shoot up to 60 frames per second in 2540p, which is 4520 by 2450 pixels. He carries on, we can shoot at any frame rate or like, including 23.98, 24, and 25 frames per second. Mr. Jim Janner also discloses that the camera can output RAW or red code, which is our wavelet codec. So we can infer that the method existed and had a name. He says, that's why when we talk about internal recording using our red code codec to start our base red drive or red flash magazine, we are not describing any other codecs. Interestingly, Mr. Janet reveals very accurate bracket of numbers. We are now looking at data rates that may be as high as 200 plus megabits per second onto a red drive. He says that we can compress to as low as 12. You will remember this exact number one year later in their patent. He says that they are optimizing red code codec. He also described the recording. You can record internally to the camera. There, the choices would include red flash, which is a sort of form or a red drive, which is a high-capacity SATA drive, and it is clear what kind of speed SATA drives could have provided back in 2006. The other style is external recording, says Jim. He emphasizes that this is a raw camera data, and he reveals the target. The target is to shoot and show images from the camera in the fall of this year. That means autumn of 2006. Interestingly, on DVX user, on 9th of October 2006, under 1K Bubble Girls video up, Mr. Jal Land posts, Red.com, enjoy. You guys gonna love this one. And he posts a link to Red.com. The link goes to this page that I've taken out from Web Archive. Mr. Jim Jannard says, first public 4K Mysterium frame grabs. And he states, these are shot 4.9K at 24 frames per second, 12 bit, using Red 1 test bed with Mysterium sensor and Cook lens. He also posts links for the general public to download the videos. He describes them captured by Mysterium at 5K, downrest to 4K, and compressed down to 1K. 
hundreds of people downloaded those clips. A bit further down, Mr. Jannard says that he will post even more of green screen shots that night on 9th of October. By now, we should be able to recognize Mr. Shulite's face. This is him, Ted, in a public display of red camera. And we are here, New York Theater, on Tuesday, November 14th, 2006, West Hollywood, LA, USA. The New Art Theater is an art house movie theater in Los Angeles, California, United States. According to Ricky, it is the flagship location of the landmark theaters chain in the United States, in which, once again, Red publicly uses their camera. This one's in California. Thankfully, filmmaker Mike Curtis, who used to run HD4 Indies, has a detailed report of the events on that day. This is his notes from the LA Red screening. It reads, Tuesday in LA, I attended the first LA screening of footages from Red's Mysterium. Saw the same footage that was shown at IBC, plus some new outdoor footage. He says, Ted's up, Ted Shalowitz. Ted, in September, showed 4K images at IBC. At NAB, goal was to show footage by fall, which is autumn. Showed on September on 60-foot screen. Showed it in New York City a couple of weeks ago. Now are showing some more. According to Red's president, Red was publicly used in a couple of occasions, both inside and outside of the United States. Considering Mr. Shaloyet's filming outside and the spectrum of the locations of the shots displayed, you can say that the camera must have been portable. Shots in the parking lot, cigar guy, girls with cigars, girls blowing gum, car shots, outdoor stuff, etc. I'll bring the color-coded patent claims again. The camera publicly used on that day was of resolution of 4520 by 2450, variable frame rate 1 to 60 frames per second at 2540 lines, on the right a config with onboard flash, that is a memory device, for onboard recording for 720p up to 4K, and then red code. For 4K at 24 frames per second, it's 323 megabyte per second down to 27.5 megabyte per second. This is roughly the same numbers given by Mr. Jenner a month earlier in the Studio Daily's interview. Red code is a wavelet-based 12-bit full raster codec. Raw 1496 by 2304 uncompressed raw Bayer image is 323 megabyte per second at 24 frame per second that gets pulled down to about 27 megabyte per second to record on the onboard digital magazine or the onboard flash. That is almost 12 to 1 compression that Mr. Janet indicated in his pre-NAB interview with the Studio Daily. Note that Mr. Grime joined the team after NAB. It leaves no doubt that what we are talking about and what has been sold at NAB 2006 is the patented video camera containing the claimed method. It's also very intriguing to see in a space of only four months since December 2005 to April 2006, everything was known and developed rather so quickly. It also has been disclosed there was a software called Red Cine reads it in the mosaics and finally then they showed two of the new shots again but they were red code compressed 10 to 1 which will be recorded to the onboard flash or the digital magazine both on board looked good to me and a bit further down we read row at 4k 24p 323 uncompressed down to 27 megabyte per second for 24 frame per second 4k Let me remind you the United States regulations again. The law says a person shall be entitled to a patent unless the invention was patented or described in a printed publication in this or a foreign country or in public use or on sale in this country more than one year prior to the date of application for patent in the United States or the right to patent will be lost. I don't think if the law can get any clearer than this. And here is the Red's patent again. It relies upon provisional applications. December 28th, 2007. Red camera was discussed, was on sale, and was used in public more than one year before the application date. Here is what I assert. 
Mr. John Ord, and Thomas Graham Natras, the named inventors of the patent, and other individuals acting on their behalf in the prosecution of the patent application, including the attorneys at the law firm working for them, were under a duty to disclose to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office both the April 25, 2006 offer for sale and the November 14, 2006 public use of the red camera. These individuals failed to do so. At least Jarnard and likely other individuals acting on his behalf in the prosecution of the patent application, including their attorneys, did not disclose the April 25, 2006 offer for sale and the November 14, 2006 public use of the red camera to the PTO, because they knew that disclosure of either of these events to the PTO would operate as a bar to the patentability of the patent. The failure to disclose the April 25, 2006 offer for sale and November 14, 2006 public use of the red camera was done with intent to deceive the PTO in order to obtain the patent. In fact, every single video camera patent of red that relies upon the first patent is invalid. Red illegally obtained the first patent and all the patents afterwards only by hiding the truth and deceiving the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The emperor is naked. If you can take other people's product and call it your own and sell it to others, if you can so easily lie to your loyal customers to take their hard-earned money out of their pocket, if you can abuse the trust they bestowed upon you to drive the competition out of the market, if you can deceive FTC, if you can break the law, if you can deceive the United States Patent Office to obtain patent, what would stop you from adopting Russian technology and call it your own? Yes, Russians. Sounds funny, right? More to come. Funny enough, according to the pattern, you should have gotten at least one handle and a Floyd head included.